Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Of course, today is the day that everybody celebrates, and I'm not going to lecture you about why not to celebrate Thanksgiving. There's enough of those videos out there. I tend to focus on time with family during these designated intervals that they give us to have time off of work. So make it about family. Um, you definitely don't want to be sitting by yourself during the days off. Uh, if you have people that you have that, that the enemy is giving you time to reach out to, it's time to reach out to those people. Unfortunately, it, they like to funnel all of our time into these designated days, uh, but it is what it is, and we got to take what we can get, don't we? Now, I decided to go live today, not live actually, this is pre-recorded, to go over a lot of things that I've been meaning to cover with you guys, but I wasn't sure about how to cover it. And it's because I can't do really a full show on some of these things that I wanted to cover with you, but I wanted to just put them on a one show, kind of an everything show today. So this is kind of a special show today. We're going to get into Isaiah chapter 65, verse 17, which of course talks about the new heaven and the new earth. We're also going to get into some headlines today, as well as Jesus' true name mentioned in the book of Matthew. What else are we going to get into today? Well, we're going to look at sightings of Trump with past presidents, and we're going to go over the one president that you will never see him in a picture with, which suggests that there was possibly some, uh, you know, working together with that president sometimes it's what they don't show you that tells the story than what they do show you and what else are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about tannin the demon monster the hydra demon monster called the tannin then we're going to start to go over some of the stuff that i saw in the first manifest episode i don't want to get too deep into it because i do want to give that a proper decode a full length decode but in the first uh episode of the new season four manifest now if you're not caught up on manifest definitely watch yesterday's video because i covered the first three seasons in a, a marathon actually it was the day before yesterday a show yes yesterday's show was about jfk but the day before that was manifest the first three seasons then we're going to get into some headlines. So that's pretty much what's going on today. Now, let's get started. Isaiah 65, 17. Now, how did I come about this verse? Well, one of you sent this to me in the comments section. And it jumped out at me because you mentioned that during the thousand year reign, that there would be choice still. And I was shocked because... I know my Bible pretty well. I'm not like a Bible sleuth, but I had never heard this before. So let's read it together. And I think I have some commentaries pulled up as well. And we can try to figure this out together. Now, I'm not saying we're going to come to a resolution today. And for me, the jury's still out on this. Because sometimes in the Bible, the interpretation or what is the word I'm looking for? When they translate it, they can make small errors and it can change the entire context of what the verse is actually saying. Best thing to do is go back to the to the uh, interlinear Bible and look at word for word how it was translated and compare that to other parts of the Bible that translate the same word and see if they translated it correctly. So let's read this. A new heaven and a new earth. This is Isaiah 65, 17. For behold, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. So, many would say this is the thousand year reign, right? After Jesus comes back. For I will create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be delight. So that's the new Jerusalem. Which is, I believe, 12,000 furlongs by 12,000 furlongs by 12,000 furlongs. I will rejoice in your Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sounds of weeping and crying will no longer be heard in her. Okay, so no weeping and crying. 
No longer will a nursing infant live but a few days, or an old man fail to live out his years. For the youth will die at a hundred years. And this is where we get into something that doesn't quite sound right. The youth will die at a hundred years? And he who fails to reach a hundred will be considered accursed? They will build houses and dwell in them. They will plant vineyards and eat their fruit. So what does this mean? I thought that uh, according to my biblical understanding, we would be perfect and wouldn't die in the thousand year reign. No longer will they build houses for others to inhabit, nor plant for others to eat. So, so many argue, oh, we're already in the thousand year reign. Well, this verse here debunks that because we're still building houses for others to inhabit and planting food for others to eat. For as is the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people, and my chosen ones will fully enjoy the work of their hands. They will not labor in vain or bear children doomed to disaster, for they will be a people blessed by the Lord, they and their descendants with them. Even before they call, I will answer. Now this thing is loaded because it also suggests that there will be infants, which means there will be reproduction, which means there will be relationships and wives and all this. Things that I didn't think would, you know, people, not me personally, but people have suggested that that won't be the case. But apparently that is what this verse is saying. And of course, the wolf and the lamb will feed together. This is the big Mandela thing that everyone talks about. And the lion will eat straw like the ox, but the food of the serpent will be dust. It will neither harm nor destroy on my holy mountain. So, also, isn't the serpent supposed to be, like, locked away for the thousand years? Maybe I'm reading this wrong. But that's what it says. I'm open to hearing all of your opinions on this down in the comments section. And please don't go on the attack and say Casey's teaching this or that because I'm not teaching anything. I'm reading this and I'm leaving this open for a discussion so we can all talk about it and figure out what this is all about because I don't know everything. Now, what does this say? Here's some commentary. This is Enduring Word Commentary. And here they have the verse. And they give an explanation here. Now I'm not saying this is the explanation, but this is what this commentary is saying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, but the child shall die 100 years old. Now understand sometimes with these numbers... 100 years could be the 1,000 years, okay? We see this in, like, the Book of Enoch, where they say that there were giants that were miles high. Well, sometimes the tra biblical translators get the numbers wrong or interpret it wrong, and it's really not that high. And one day to God is a 1,000 years to us. So maybe this 100 years is really a 1,000 years. So that would make sense. But what, let's see what this guy says. Quickly, as the prophetic habit, Isaiah shifts gears and now speaks not of the eternal state, but of the millennial earth. So yeah, the thousand year earth. There will be death in the millennial earth, but in the transformed biology and ecology of the world under the reign of Jesus Christ, people will live incredibly longer as they did in the days before the flood. In the millennial earth, people will so long People will live so long that if someone dies being 100 years old, people will consider that accursed. Huh. That's one person's perspective on this. Now, here's the interlinear Bible. This is the Q Bible that I often show you guys. And this is a really good one because this breaks down things in terms of the original Hebrew language. I'm not sure if Isaiah was written in Hebrew or Aramaic, but here you can see you can pause over these different words and it will tell you the root word, what it means. 
And then you can double check it and see how it was used in other parts of the Bible to make sure they're not trying to pull a fast one. Now we've caught some of their little fast ones that they've pulled in the past, haven't we, in other, other parts of the Bible. Eve got a man from the Lord, comes to mind, Genesis 4.1. Well, the word from can also be against that it's and it's translated that that way in other parts of the Bible. So Eve got a man against the Lord actually makes a lot more sense in the context of the rest of the Bible. Like for instance, parts where Jesus calls the Pharisees the 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 uh, that their father was the serpent, the devil. Right? The first murderer suggests that Eve got a man against the Lord, which is Cain, the Canaanite bloodline. And that supports, you know, the difference in the bloodlines in the book of Genesis, in which Adam is listed separately from Cain's bloodline. Cain is not included in Adam's bloodline in Genesis. There are two separate bloodlines. Why wouldn't Cain fall under Adam's lineage? It should, right? But it doesn't. And then that would also make sense when God said there would be enmity between the two seeds, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent, the two bloodlines. So, one example. So it's always best to go into the, these kinds of sites and double check how the words used and if they used it correctly. So let's take a look here, see if we can find the passage about the infant. It says, nor old man, okay, it says here, there will be no more thence an infant of days. See, the word infant is babe. So that sounds pretty direct. Of days. Uh, from an unused root word to be hot or a day. Okay. Nor an old man, nor old, that hath not be filled His days, for the child shall die, child, a boy, shall die a hundred years, hundred also as a multiplicative and a fraction, <clears throat> primitive numeral, years old, hmm, a year, a revolution. So, this will require some time to break down, but I wanted to put this out there to you guys so we could have a discussion on it. And see where it all heads. So that's about it for Isaiah 65. I wanted to pull that up for you guys. Now, let's get into Jesus' name. Now, I did not know this as well. And, you know, this is where we all could be better at biblical research, right? Sometimes I get focused on certain parts of the Bible. But there's always new things to learn in the Bible. Now, I had no idea that this was the case because there's this movement afoot to use the proper Hebrew name of Jesus, right? And we use it sometimes. Other times we use the more common name that is known, which is the Greek translation of his name, Eusis. Understand that it's a simple language change. Now, of course, the language change did try to mock Jesus because it's Zeus, right? Which is the sun god. And, but understand that Zeus was probably named after Jesus to mock him. That's where they came, that's where they came up with this god, Zeus, all right? So, sometimes you have to think things backwards. Don't think because Jesus' name is Jesus that, that that associates him with Zeus. Zeus actually stole that from Jesus to try to mock him. Okay? And that's how you have to think of these things because oftentimes these people will try to show, do that. You know, they'll try to actually change things up. So, make sure we're connected here. And so... That's where things sit. Let me give you another example. 
the cross of Tammuz. Okay, well, the first cross far predates Tammuz. The original language of Hebrew, thousands of years before Tammuz used the cross, there was a Hebrew letter that looks like a cross, and it was used to mark the end of a furrow. Okay? I can't think of the name. I think it's a Tav is what it is. So, of course, the enemy wants to be like the Most High. So he steals everything that God does and flips the script to confuse you. And then he gets us all fighting about who, what the true names are, who the, tr you know, who the true God is. So, it's all about who you worship. If you're using the cross for t to worship Tammuz, then you're in trouble. You're worshiping a false god. If you've been tricked into thinking Jesus is Tammuz, you're in trouble for believing the lie. You see how this works? So, just because Jesus' name transla translates to Zeus doesn't necessarily mean that Jesus is Zeus, first of all. Second of all, Jesus... In his translated name was known by the enemy he knew that Jesus name would be translated into the Greek so he came up with a false God to mimic him to hijack his name so this is where we need to stop fighting about his true name okay because Jesus doesn't see names Jesus has many names Redeemer and like I think he's got like 40 different names that you can actually call him the Savior, and all these things. So, now, to give fair balance to that, the book of Matthew is actually written in Hebrew, and I didn't know this. Matthew is written in Hebrew, and in it, it actually speaks Jesus' true name. Now, it's up for debate what it actually says. Some translate it as Yeshua. Okay? Okay. And this is the word that most people use. Some people translate it as Yahushua. Okay. Which sounds kind of like Yeshua. A lot of it's just um, spelling. Yeshua sounds like a lot like Yahushua. Right? It's just like an extra syllable in there. But does Jesus want us all bickering about his exact name? I do not believe he does. It says we will all know his true name when he returns, which suggests that a lot of people didn't know it. it doesn't mean that he's not listening to you. Now, let's move on to another topic here. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but they took down the leaks of Wiki. It's gone. Welcome to free America, right? Well, we had mentioned in a previous show about pineal glands of penguins and how they were basically uh, the United States government was doing research into the pineal glands of Antarctic penguins. Now why would they be doing research into the Antarctic penguins? Well, penguins live in an environment where half the year it's completely dark and half the year it's completely light. And so, my guess is they were looking into their pineal glands to see if they could figure out their circadian rhythms, the serotonin melatonin dance, the land of milk and honey in the brain, which causes you to sleep and wake each day based on the amount of light coming in your eyes. But there could be a darker meaning behind this. Now, the study that they did, and you can find the study, the study's still out there. From 1973, all you got to type do is type in penguins, 1973 study, pineal glands, and it should pop right up. But this is interesting because there's something more to this. You have to wonder if these people were consuming these pineal glands of penguins. If there was something special about penguins that maybe they're not telling us. I'll keep digging on this topic here. Now, let's get into Trump and the Bushes. Interestingly, I went to Getty Images because Getty Images seems to have a lot of information 
about things that have happened in the past, photos of people with other people. It's a good resource to go back and look to see if you can find images of people with other people. This is this Getty site is where a lot of people found the images of like Trump with Ghislaine Maxwell, for instance. Lots and lots of pictures of that. It's like an archive site for pictures. And I was looking back because, you know, we have this theory that Trump had some kind of super weapon that he got from his Uncle John and who got it from Tesla to turn metal into dust or to melt metal. Because remember, Tesla was working on such a weapon. It was called like a death ray or something like that. And I thought to myself, you know, based on all the research we had done, if there was such a weapon that was used on blind 11 that there would be pictures of trump with george w bush well here's what i found and this creeped me out i went back in these archives and i looked and guess what you see pictures of trump with bush's father as you can see here let's look through some of these There are at least three, as you can see here. And there's pictures of Trump with Bill Clinton, people that were supposed to go to jail, right? Another president. Here's him, they're two golfing together. Now, this is widely known. They were friends. And still are, actually. And there aren't any pictures with a particular person. I searched and I searched. There are no pictures of Trump with George W. Bush. Now, that tells a little bit of a story, doesn't it? The story that it tells is that there was an intentional separation created so as not to raise suspicion, to not connect the two men together. He was with his father. They seem to be very friendly. That's Don King in the middle. Don King, Don Trump. But there are none with the sun. Very weird, isn't it? Now, let's move on to other topics. Remember Biff Tannen? From Back to the Future? Self-proclaimed Trump character. Well, we surmise that a Biff Tannen was Hiram a Biff and Tannen the sea monster, the Hydra sea monster. We've been talking a lot about Hydras, haven't we? And connected that to the current situation the world is going through. A Canaanite sea god of mythology, chaos, and evil. The dragon. Now, this particular monster is actually mentioned by name in the Bible. Tannen appears in the Baal cycle as one of the servants of Yam. Literally, the sea. So this is kind of like the beast coming up out of the sea, isn't it? He's usually depicted as serpentine with a double tail. The Tannenim also appeared in the Hebrews, Bibles, the book of Genesis, Exodus, Deuteronomy, Psalm, Job, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. Explicitly listed among the creatures created by God on the fifth day of the Genesis creation narrative. I don't know about that. But there's something going on here, isn't there? Because Tannen is listed in the Apocalypse of Isaiah as among the sea beasts that will be slain by Yahweh on that day. The dragon. So it's called the dragon. Biff Tannen is the dragon. It's the devil. This is unbelievable. So more and more information coming to light as we speak. Now, many of you had asked me to look at this series called Manifest. And like I said earlier in the show, we did... A marathon of the first three seasons we decoded so you want to get caught up on that and manifest is about 
an entire airplane full of passengers that go missing. And when they return, they return with supernatural powers. Weird thing is, is now I'm on season four. And I just started watching it. I'll do a full decode on this. But basically, the season four is all about cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms. Now, notice how in this synopsis, they don't mention cherry blossoms. They call them Sakura petals. But in the episode, they actually call them cherry blossoms. Now, what are what's the importance of that? Well, we had covered cherry blossoms at length, hadn't we? Years ago. Because before the pandemic began, we were covering Operation Cherry Blossoms, which was all about a Japanese plot to send red balloons over the Pacific Ocean filled with biological warfare. In other words, this was a hint that we were up for a pandemic. Let's read a little bit about Operation Cherry Blossom. And hopefully you guys will join me for Season 4 Decode that I'll be doing next week on a Manifest. Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night was a 1945 plan to de develop by Shiro Ishii to wage biological warfare upon civilian populations centered in Southern California and the United States during the final months of World War II using pathogens created by members of Ishii's Unit 731. Now, Metallica has a song called All Nightmare Long. We had decoded that as well before the pandemic, and that also had these Operation Cherry Blossom balloons flying over the Pacific and landing in America, causing sickness and disease, biological and chemical warfare. So let's read a little bit about this. Unit 731 was specifically created by the Japanese military in Harbin, which was then located in Japanese-occupied Manchukuo, for researching biological and chemical warfare, which they carried out human experimentation on men, women, children, and infants, regardless of whether they were captives of warfare casualties. They had encased bubonic plague, cholera, smallpox, botulism, anthrax, and other diseases into bombs where they were routinely dropped on Chinese combatants and non-combatants. 580,000 people were killed. There's that number 58 again, isn't it? According to other sources, tens of thousands and perhaps as many as 400,000 Chinese died of bubonic plague, cholera, anthrax, other diseases, biological warfare. During the first few months of war with the United States following the attack on Pearl Harbor, Japan also had previously planned to use biological weapons against Americans. During the Battle of Bataan in March 1942, Japanese considered releasing 200 pounds of plague-carrying fleas and 150 million insects in each of 10 separate attacks. However, the surrender of American forces rendered the plan unnecessary. In, in early July 1944, during the Battle of Saipan, when the war was turned against Japan, plague-infested fleas were again intended to be used against American combatants. However, the Japanese submarine carrying the fleas was sunk in the American submarine swordfish by the American submarine swordfish off Chichijima around 1944. Japan succeeded in launching a total of 9,300 incendiary and anti-personnel bombs carried by balloons which were designed to rise to 30,000 feet swept eastward by the jet stream to the continental United States. They killed six American civilians near Bly, Oregon. Now Bly is a special place. This is where my father died in the city of Bly, Oregon. Apparently the Japanese were successful at killing Americans in Bly, Oregon. Very bizarre. The Matrix is crazy. Caused short circuit in the power lines, uh, supplying electricity for the nuclear reactor cooling pumps in the Manhattan Project's production facility at the Hanford site in Washington. 
So, think of the odds of that. A balloon from halfway across the Pacific Ocean just happened to hit a reactor cooling pump in Oregon? They expect us to buy that cover story? Are you kidding me? That's like, what do they call that? A needle in a haystack. So, here's the operational plan for cherry blossoms. Let's get into that. During the last months of the war, Ichi was preparing for a long-distance attack on the U.S. Operation Cherry Blossoms at Night called for the use of airplanes to spread plague over the Southern California at night. The plan was finalized on March 26, 1945. Five of the new I-400 class long-range submarines were to, to be sent across the Pacific Ocean, each carrying three aircraft loaded with plague-infected inf fleas. The submarines were to surface near San Diego and launch the aircraft toward the target, either to drop plague via balloon bombs, here's your 99 red balloons, or to crash in enemy territory. Either way, the plague would then infect people in the area and kill perhaps tens of thousands. This is a kamikaze mission. And it was planned to, to begin on September 22nd, 1945. But then Japan surrendered. Wow, what a story, you guys. What else do we have here? Let's get into some of these other stories. Now, this is weird. This is Tom Cruise at a game. And look at his face. I mean, this is kind of creepy, right? Almost looks like he's wearing a mask. Or maybe this isn't Tom Cruise at all. Maybe this is his clone. A lot of people are shocked. Tom Cruise's face shocked the world this week when he showed up at a basketball game at the Oracle Park in San Francisco with his son. His face looked very different compared to just a few months ago when he was seen watching the Euro Cup Finals in England. So here's him at the Euro Cup Finals and then you saw him here with what appears to be some kind of transformation. Just weird. Now, I'm not into mocking celebrities. We don't do that on this channel. Uh, because that f goes right into the enemy's hands. Because that's not, you know, something that we're supposed to do as Christians. Mocking someone is just as evil as... Be them and their evil. So that's not the strategy we use on this channel. I'm not trying to make fun of Tom Cruise here. I'm just trying to show you that something is not right. Something is not right. What do you guys think it is? Let's hear your comments down in the comments section. Now, to finish the show off today, I've got some headlines I want to go over with you guys. These just broke. A soil fungus that causes lung infections spreading across the U.S. Now, what's going on with this? And here's the hot spot here. They've got the map here. Uh, just so happens to be the freedom-loving states. The South and the Midwest. Unbelievable. Constantly under attack. Now, what are stories like this designed to do? Well, they're designed to make you afraid. To make you not want to garden. To make you basically dependent on their system, their economic system, instead of being independent. Let's read and see what's happening here. The fungus histoplasma, which causes lung infections, was concentrated in the Midwest in the 1950s and 60s, but now causes significant disease through much of the country. An illness causing fungus in the soil of nearly all U.S. states. Researchers behind the work say doctors may be relying on outdated risk maps and therefore missing diagnoses of the infection, which can sometimes be deadly. Primarily in Ohio, Mississippi River Valleys. So, every few weeks I get a call from a doctor in Boston area, a different doctor every time, about a case they can't solve. So this is more fear, 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 fear. Now, there, is there any truth to this? Maybe. But understand that compromised immune systems is usually where people get overtaken by these biologicals that these elite are creating and distributing. 
If you have a strong immune system, you won't fall prey to this stuff. But notice how they never talk about a strong immune system and how to have and how to achieve that. That's never ever talked about by our CDC and our, our authorities because they know that if you knew how to have a strong immune system, that you wouldn't fall prey to this stuff. Now let's get on to this other story here. A mystery trunk from the 1930s washes up at a Florida national park. This is the Miami Herald. Look at this thing. It's like something out of the Titanic or something. This is weird. Like, if this thing was really under the ocean, it wouldn't look like that, would it? This could be some kind of a hoax. A body-sized steamer, of course it's a body-sized steamer trunk from the 1930s, mysteriously showed up on a beach in at Florida's Fort Matanzas National Monument. Strange arrival was revealed November 18th when a photographer known as East Coast Mike O'Malley posted photos showing a black trunk tangled in the roots of a toppled tree. Among his images was an appearing was one appearing to show a sandbag attached to the trunk as if it had been intended to sink. Wow. So here's the trunk. Looks like it was just sunk. It doesn't even look like it had been in there long. But it no but it is a vintage 1930s steamer's trunk. Brand called Never Break Trunks. It has indeed gotten weird, but not in the way he might have expected. Nothing of interest was found in the trunk. But that revelation only fueled increasingly wild theories about what fell out. If it was on a ship that sank, how long it was adrift, and if its reappearance involved the Bermuda Triangle's mythical ability to bend time. Oh, now there is a concept there. That's why the trunk doesn't look that old or that it had been there for very long. Interesting. So here's some more pictures of it. Sandbag tied to it. Very little rust. I mean, if anything, maybe two months. It would still look like this underwater a month to two months, but not not a hundred years. So here they talk about time travel. Who owned the trunk? They actually mention the Titanic here, Bermuda Triangle. So interesting. Maybe they'll do some analysis on this stuff. Well, uh, what else do we have here in the headlines? What's this? China's problem of youth game addiction has been solved, top industry body. So, if you didn't know, there is a another pandemic going on, and that is youth becoming addicted to electronics and gaming. This is a big deal. Apparently in China, it's so big of a deal that nothing else is getting done. But these children's time is consumed in, with gaming, and there's no initiative to do anything else in life, which of course would create a future generation Dependent on the system. Let's see what China has to say about this. How they resolve this game addiction issue. A comment came from a report from China Game Industry Group Committee. Affiliated with the online game publishing regulator. China Game Industry Research Institute and data provider CNG. Said on an official WeChat account on Tuesday. Stepped in with two... With new rules barring anyone under 18 from playing video games for more than three hours a week. Oh my gosh. Well, how are they going to know how long you're playing a video game for? A stringent social intervention that is set that, that it said was needed to pull the plug. A growing addiction to what it had described as a spiritual opium. Wow. The move came as part of a broad regulatory crackdown against the Chinese technology sector, sector and was seen as an effort to also tighten controls over the gaming industry, which was hit soon after with lengthy title approval freeze. CNG said the report found that more than 75% of young players now played games for less than three hours a week and praised Chinese game companies for achieving remarkable results after setting up systems to curb game addiction. Wow. Let's see what some of the comments say. Now somebody just needs to tell the boys who game 10 hours a day. I don't think anyone has mentioned it to them. Huh. I think the kids are only playing 3 hours a week. 
on Chinese sites. The rest of the time, they are foreign game sites catering to Chinese children. Does anyone believe the Chinese government? Hmm. So, weird times we're living in, you guys. Weird times. Now, I have a somewhat of a sad story to tell you. I finally got the internet hooked up yesterday at my cabin. And the gentleman that came out, we were talking about race relations. And that was the positive part of the conversation. You know, he was saying how he used to be in a uh, country band. And his drummer was black. And the guy, he said, just kept complaining about race relations. And he turned and looked over to his, his, uh, his drummer. And he said, look at your life. You're in a country band. We have all these people coming up to us for our autographs, treating you just like they treat us. Why are you still going on about this? The guy got offended and left. And this is the problem. If we keep believing the lie, then we all then we manifest that reality with a, with negativity. Here you found a man at the pinnacle of success. Who was complaining about race relations. And so me and this young man had a really good conversation. He couldn't believe I was 49 years old. He's like, I thought you were in your low 30s. I was like, thanks for the compliment. I said, look, a lot of us get it. I go, look, here we are right here. And I told him a little bit about opportunities that I had in my life by applying myself. I didn't work all that hard. I mean, yeah, life's hard for everybody. But I was able to get a college degree and all these things. And he was like, man, he goes, a lot of people of color are afraid to talk about success because they think that it works against race relations. And I said, no, that's exactly what we need to be talking about, about that there is opportunity for people of color. All you have to do is walk through the doors. And so we were both encouraged by the conversation. He was encouraged. But then he shared some information with me. He said in the city that I live in that there were teachers in the school. I'm not going to name the city. But there are teachers in the school that are pushing the whole identifying children identifying with animals. And interestingly, he said that his child, his four-year-old child's classroom actually put in a kitty litter box. And the children were allowed to defecate into the box because they identified as a cat. Now, how sick is that? Now, I was saddened by this because the reason why I moved out here was to get away from all this. And he, and he and I talked about what to do next. We can't allow this kind of sickness into our children's minds. He didn't know what to do. He was visibly upset about it. He goes, I can't believe this is happening in Arkansas. He, goes, he said a lot of people are moving from other areas here. And bringing these kinds of ideas. So, you know, God bless that young man who came out. God bless him and his four-year-old son. And pray for people like that. Pray that this doesn't overtake some of these last bastions of free thought and godliness. Pray that that does not happen. So, what else do we have here? So why did I mention that? Well, this is part of the problem. The Great Escape. Rich young professionals earning more than 100 k are fleeing California and New York. Here's why and where they're headed. Now, the problem here is these people come into areas and they build these big McMansions and they raise the property values for all the people that don't have a lot of money, pushing them out. All in the name of capitalism and growth, right? Well, it's a double-edged sword, capitalism and growth. The more you grow, the more they tax, the more your gas prices go up, and all of a sudden, the people of little means have no way to survive. They become slaves to the rich, or they're pushed out completely. So where are all these people going is the question. Let's read. As the cost of living continues to climb, these young adults who once fled the nest are now returning home to roost. In fact, analysis by the Census Bureau of Harvard University, of course Harvard, 
Early has found that 80% of young adults now live less than 100 miles from where they grew up. So, Texas is where they're going to. 2019 to 2020, Texas ranked most popular destination. So obviously we have a culture conflict going on here, right? Florida, going to Florida. Washington State. Colorado. New Jersey. So, not good, you guys. Not good. What else do we have here? Orion completes first lunar flyby. Captures stark images of the moon. <clears throat> now, I have this pulled up because this is silly. <laughs> here we are, right? 2022. And look at this image we get of the moon. Look how blurry it is. You can't even click on this. Wouldn't they have some kind of high resolution, resolution photo here? Look at the surface of the moon. It looks literally like the same pictures we got in 1969. Look at the edge here. This does not look real to me. This does not look real. So, look at black and white pictures. Where's the color at? Look how blurry this is. It's blurry on purpose is my point. Where are the stars? No stars. Why don't they use a different filter to bring the stars into focus? Wouldn't that be a much a much more spectacular image? To show people if you really want them to believe in space? Wouldn't you take the time to develop a camera that shows the stars? I would. But apparently that's not the case. Now, speaking of space. Bezos is back on his podium. Hold on to your money. Just released a financial warning. Says you might want to rethink buying a new automobile, refrigerator, or whatever. Three better recession-proof buy. So, apparently these people know that we're in for some lean times. Now's the time to try to think about what you're doing in your life. There might not always be that six-figure job that you have. You need to plan for the future. Low tax base property with resources some some kind of living dwelling that you can build for a very low cost have a place to bug out to or have an arrangement with friends who might have an extra you know cabin on their property say hey look if things go sideways uh can i rent your cabin for 400 dollars a month or something and i'll help with the farm animals or something you need to start thinking about these things because they're telling us that things are going to get really weird pretty soon now. And this is what Bezos is saying. He says, the economy does not look good right now. <laughs> you think? Now, how did all this kick off? Well, <clears throat> while Trump was giving us his rhetoric about, oh, trade agreements with China. Yeah, and this, and we're going to make stuff in America again. Well, none of that really happened, did it? Because if it did, our economy would look great. Then on top of it, he spent us into oblivion. $6.6 trillion. Most of it went to the corporations. And as we see, none. we're not getting any of it back. What the corporations did with that money is they started building stuff. Saw a lot of construction during the COVID years when I was in Connecticut. It was like a whole new city sprung up around me. All the rents almost doubled. Utilities went through the roof. Those are weird years because there was all this weird building going on. You're like, how are they building when there's supposed to be, you know, shortages of all this stuff? Where are they getting their materials? But yet there you saw it. It was all happening in plain sight as everyone else was getting shut down. But magically, these they were still able to let these people build buildings. They didn't get shut down. Many of you saw the boom as well. It was this weird, eerie episode in during the spam demic well now they're taking it a step further because you can't spend that much money you can't give out that many checks you can't give out 6.6 .6 trillion dollars in money and expect inflation to stand still you it just doesn't work economics 101 you give away free money 
and inflation ensues. And that's exactly what happened. Now, of course, Biden picked up the ball. And but by the time Biden came into uh, into the presidency, inflation was already well on its way. It's just nobody wanted to talk about it. Nobody wanted to talk about it because it's part of the crashing of the American economy and it's all been done on purpose. Now, what's this going to do? It's going to bring America to their knees. Basically, America is going to have to play ball with the agenda. They're going to blame it on climate change. This is when they're going to enact all their stuff and push it through. They'll pick whatever president they think that they can get away with it with. And that is our future. Anyway, those are the headlines and kind of the everything show today. I love each and every one of you guys. And we will be back on here probably on the weekend sometime. Take care and be safe, you guys.